thanks for the kumbaka. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Tasty stuff. You don't have to like drink it if you don't like it. Mm. But I know it's, it's good it's for good my for belly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a SCOBY, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Okay. And it's like this really cool thing that like grows. And you put like tea and sugar in it and boil it and then like let it sit for like eight days and then it becomes like the kombucha. You've had the same but scoby? But this scoby is like newer. Like I just, okay. put, I just put on the classifieds, the free classifieds and asked if I could get one. And then like I got this one and she gave it to me for free. So then literally making it costs you like, 50 cents, probably a jar versus like whatever, $5 at the store. Do you know what I mean? It's like significantly cheaper and then you choose what you want to put in it. So what do you yeah. usually flavor it with? Or do you just drink it like dark? Cause this one is a vanilla and then you've got a love one. I, love, I don't know what's in this one. That's I bet you it has hibiscus. Jasmine green tea. Oh, Jasmine. Chamomile, hmm. lavender. Yeah. I don't know. I like mine with ginger, lemongrass. That's really good, but uh, lemongrass here is really expensive. <laughs> really? Like fresh stuff, or do you use yeah. like... Oh, okay. I've never really bought fresh lemongrass. Buy it frozen like at the Asian market. It's really, really cheap. So you just came in um, off the white way. You're yes. out there having some fun mm -hmm. with your nephews. Yeah. You Were you skating or just walking or... Skating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's nice out there today. Yeah, it was a gorgeous day. Like, the sun is really warm, too. Like, you pretty much skate in a t-shirt if you wanted. Have you been getting out skiing at all, or...? Yeah, I went, like, snowboarding a lot the last few weeks. Did you just go up to Panorama, or...? Yeah, I went to Fairmont, too. I taught, like, when I'm, well, I'm teaching one of my roommates, helping her to learn how to snowboard, so... Oh, yeah. that's interesting. So, so it's you... kind of fun. Like and then I tried skiing again. Yeah, how'd that go? I'm not a very good skier. <laughs> <laughs> when you're really used to going down the hill on one direction, like to change is like psychologically challenging. <laughs> right. Well, I, it's on my bucket list that by the time I turn 50, um, which is many, many moons away, mm -hmm. I'd like to take some skiing lessons. Um, but my first year here in the valley, I actually took some snowboarding lessons and mm -hmm. I fell. And I wasn't even moving. I just fell over and snapped both my bones and my wrist. So I had a Collie's fracture. I snapped Ow. my radius and my ulna. And I've kind of been really afraid to get um, moving fast in anything other than my feet, my own feet. <laughs> so even skating is pretty scary. I bought some rollerblades, tried rollerblading. That's pretty scary for me. Rollerblading is really scary. Yeah. I don't know why. Like rollerblading and mountain biking, I just don't feel comfortable. Like downhill mountain biking. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So I bought some <laughs> wrist guards. Oh, there and you I, go. And I tried again. I went out ice skating on the White Way a few weeks ago. And <laughs> how'd it go? It went okay. It went okay. I wasn't like 100% confident and I was pretty like, it felt like heavy footed. Uh, but I got out there, got some fresh air, met a new friend and yeah, she and I just went and enjoyed half hour out on the on the lake were there a lot of people out today yeah there's quite a few people oh well, it's like sunday so okay I do you still weekend, have right? do you still have to pay to get on there or? uh i think it's like five dollars yeah yeah interesting well that's my mm. first time ever going out on the white way and i think it's a really uh oh, unique it's kind such of a nice feature thing to have here we're so lucky yeah. we're so blessed like we have the mountain this is actually believe it or not it's kind of ironic that this is the lake uh, my friend did this print. Um, so this is um, Windermere, Windermere Lake. Oh, okay. So that's where you went ice skating today. There's a big trail that they've that goes all the way to Windermere, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the Purcell Mountains. And uh, yeah, a friend of mine. This is one of his prints that he gave to me. That's such a pretty pretty view down there of all the mountains. You can see the Rocky Mountains too. Yeah, it's really beautiful. How long have you been in the valley for? Since September. You're pretty new then. Well, yeah, I did a, I did work here like three years ago at Panorama. But it's a bit different to like live in the town of Invermere rather than up on the mountain. Like it's a different vibe. <laughs> Down in the valley to be right in Invermere now. Yeah. So uh, you live in Invermere now and you also have a private practice out of a clinic. Yeah, <laughs> I do massage <laughs> therapy. Um, I work out of Rademacher Chiropractic, which is a clinic in town. 
Um, I actually chose to come to this clinic specifically because Margaret asked me if I'd like to <laughs> rent her space. And I've known her for like a really long time because she helped me when I was in a car accident. So I got chiropractic from her when I was like a teenager. <clears throat> And then like when I worked at Pano, I came down here and got chiropractic from her. And then she found out that I was now a registered massage therapist. So she was like, oh, you should come work here and like rent the space. But I felt like I wasn't ready because it's kind of a big step to be like, okay, I'm going to do my own business and like trust that I'm ready for this and that I want to be in this area for however long. And like, so I was, did some locums first and just like put, got my feet wet more into my career feeling it out and deciding what I wanted to do or where I wanted to be and like I decided to come back here so my family's here so it's really nice and I love the mountains it just kind of feels more like home so especially because I'm from Golden so and I'm you, like a hop away you are a hop skip and a jump and you're quite the out, outdoor adventurist you also just got back from a two-week stint at a at a ski hill? Oh, yeah. I worked at Chatter Creek for a week, actually. <laughs> was it a week? Mm-hmm. I was doing massage therapy. Like, last winter, I actually worked there for a season. So, yeah, it's a cat skiing lodge, so you get to enjoy the powder experience of skiing, which is incredible. I miss it a lot. <laughs> what are some summer sports that you do? In the um, I like swimming. I do a lot of yoga. I like hiking. I like camping, biking. Um, paddle boarding, anything outside, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like <exciting>. all year, <laughs> really. Do you want to talk about your theory on why people are under so much stress? Yeah, I think people are under so much stress because our, in our society, there's like this idea that you have to like go, go, go and be, be, be and be busy in order to like be worthy or like be accepted or like be pushing to something all the time, trying to attain this like unattainable goal of whatever it is, being rich or just like feeling like they have to do everything, like so much pressure in that regard for us that we never take time to just be yeah, or be calm in ourselves. And like our nervous system is in shock because we aren't supposed to always constantly be in this sympathetic state where we're like fight or flight. So like when you're under constant stress and pressures from life, you're in this flight or fight state and you can't relax or, and so it's really important to get into the parasympathetic nervous system and like calm down and be able to like, um, like calm your breathing and be able to sleep better and everyone has a hard time changing into that lower, calmer state because they're always on this hype. So it's really important for our society to like just to be sometimes and like take it easy and relax and do the things that you like doing rather than just feeling like you have to be pursuing something all the time yeah we definitely live in a fast-paced society and yeah times are changing you know just look at the evolution of electronics right like it's gone through all these different phases and everything's just changing so quickly right and so we're trying to keep up with the joneses we're trying to keep up with the masses and it costs money to continually be upgrading our equipment i guess yeah and uh yeah so people are sometimes leaving self-care um out of their spending budget uh, i find that you know um you know art and wellness are kind of the last thing on a lot of people's lists and they only really come to us when it's almost, you know, they're in that sympathetic state where they're under a lot of pressure and they actually have a lot of pain now in their body because it takes, um, you know, it, it goes from emotional into physical, right? When they're emotionally stressed and always on the go, then it starts to, you know, take a toll on the physical body. So then they're coming to us for massage or for yoga and uh, it takes a while to get them back into that relaxation response where their body is relaxed and feeling feeling better. Right? Yeah, for sure. So what other modalities are you trained in other than uh, massage? Um, I do yoga. Like, I can teach yoga. So I really love it. I think a big part of why I love yoga is because it helps people move and become in their bodies, like, become back to their bodies. Like, we are so, like, outside of ourselves. Like... In our environment, we're, like, constantly, like, bombarded with so many things 
that like we can't like we don't as easily we're not able to go in and realize like what our inner environment is and yoga like brings it to you like you create this presence and then you're like becoming more self-aware and that's really important and it helps us to slow down a little bit and take a deeper look at ourselves and yeah get to the mat and turn off all those external influences right and just kind of tune within um so where where did you go to teach learn how to teach yoga i <laughs> i went to baja mexico to do my 200 hour teacher training neat which was like an incredible experience i i just can't even yeah say enough how amazing it was it's just like so transformative like when you start like the first day compared to like the 28th day <clears throat> like just the transformation your body has went through and like when you do the yoga poses over and over and over your body releases every time especially if you're doing six hours of yoga a day like you're having like not only the physical release but like the emotional release with it so it's like so transformative in such a short amount of time because you do so much work that's beautiful yeah yeah I find um I can tap into a, a deeper um emotional kind of state of well-being in those flow when we go through those flowing uh, movements and uh, you know it just becomes like a dance with yourself and you know especially when you have the right music on uh, and speaking of music what type of music do you like to listen to while you're doing yoga or massage do you have any favorite artists or um, I like to listen to Ben Howard a lot when I'm doing massage and just like um, music that's instrumental quite often um, and yoga I can listen to anything and do yoga like I, a lot of the time I'm just like not that motivated to like create my own playlist so I just like take other people's do you just download them and then I can use them for massage oh well you'll yeah. have to check out my Spotify because I've been starting a few uh, yoga playlists of okay. my own uh, I've been getting into like lots of um, I've been really enjoying some like uh, mantras uh, so songs that have mantras Oh, as, good. As well as some drumming. I've been listening to some drumming, and that really helps me to create my, I call it my zen zone. So it just helps me to get into the moment and relax and get like a little flow within myself where I think music is really important when it comes to, um, to creating that movement. So whether it's your massage uh, movement that you're performing or your yoga practice, and so you also practice Reiki? Yeah, I do, actually. That's exciting. You mm -hmm. want to talk about Reiki? It's like this healing touch that occurs, and like you are just a, a vessel of this. And so the person is like, can have such an amazing response, and you're like, oh, like I was a part of that. So it's a really cool experience to be like, oh, I help facilitate this situation. Like that's you're a catalyst for their yeah. relaxation response or... Mm -hmm. their inner healing yeah so it's pretty special in that way and do you do any other forms of massage or healing modalities well I'm going to take a course pretty quickly here okay on crane I'm um, sorry on osteopath techniques so I'm very excited to try it out um osteopath techniques are amazing because they look like when you when an osteopath looks at the body as a whole and then figures out what is not functioning properly based on the whole body rather than like looking at your arm and being like, oh, there's a dysfunction here. We'll just like do something. But like that arm problem could be coming from your hip, right? So an osteopath takes the full body approach and is able to move things in ways that your body is like more happy, like in a place where it's supposed to be, but not like where it has to be to like look functionally but like where your body will function better. So not every body is going to be the same. It like differs from person to person. And what inspired you to want to take this new training? Like have you had some sessions or have you just been studying up on it or? Um, I've had a couple of sessions and I had a uh, instructor in school who was taking the osteopath course and he was just like showing us a bunch of techniques that he was learning. And I was just like, oh, I kind of want to be a part of this magic. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, when you, t to like grab, hold on to someone's wrist and then be like, oh, I know exactly where on your neck is out. Like, it's like the palpation skill is, the sense is amazing. Like, 
I mean, I can tell probably something that's in your elbow, but like, that's pretty close. You know, <laughs> to have that sense of touch is I've never amazing. had an osteopath uh, treatment myself, but I have heard that it's, it's actually like a magical, unique experience for everybody that I've heard talk about it. So I'm quite interested. So good for you. And is that a, is it a longer course? Is it like massage therapy or is it more of a... Well, I'm just taking the two day intro course, but like debate, depending on like how I feel about it, I might um, continue, but it is a five year program after what's all said and done. So that's quite a bit of time, but we'll see. Yeah. You've already got so much feel. knowledge. Yeah. As a but like the more you learn, like the more, I don't know, it's exciting. There, like the more you learn, the less you know. I feel like I thought I knew a bit and now I just don't because... I know like these very specific things about muscles and bones, but like, I don't know, like nearly as much as there is to know. Yeah. It was a very rigorous program. Yeah. 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 And like, I can help people with like major issues. So that's a good thing. Like with certain pathologies and to know like that knowledge. Right. So yeah. you have, um, do you still have space in your calendar for people to book with you? Yes, yeah, I do. For massage. Mm -hmm. So we'll include uh, your contact information. Okay. And uh, that'll give people a way to connect with you um, in, this, in this area of Invermere. Um, if anyone's looking for an RMT. And again, the nice thing about with being a registered massage therapist is most people that have uh, specific insurance packages or medical benefits, they can right off and do you have direct billing yeah you? i do yeah so that's awesome so it's pretty handy so what is it that you like on your life journey when did you decide like when was there the great divide where ruth was ruth and then ruth wanted to be a healer and take this the, the courses that would provide you the knowledge to be able to professionally help other people in their health and wellness journey um well i was <clears throat> When I was in high school, I thought about taking massage therapy, and I looked at the program, and I was like, oh, that's a lot of science. I was like, that's not really my, like, cup of tea, so I'm going to back down on that. <laughs> and so then, like, a while later, like, um, I just decided, I was, like, working the oil field, and I didn't really love my job, and I was just like, like, this is not what I meant to do. Like, what am I doing? But I'm here, so I don't know. And then, like, I just looked more into the massage program, and and then I just applied. I was like, it's time. I need to change. And so I just applied. And then I went to school in Calgary for a year for massage. And then I decided to transfer because in Calgary, we have a different situation with registration versus BC because they don't have a, a College of Massage Therapy of Alberta, so they don't have a board they don't have to take a board exam. So they don't have, their credentials across the board are not the same. And so then I decided to come to BC because then I can work in BC. And then I actually ended up having to do two more years of massage because oh, they wouldn't take a bunch of my credits. I was just going to say, you so couldn't transfer really, your credits. really like, oh, wasn't the best. They crap. told me like the, like the day that I came there, they were like, oh, you're going to have to do your practicum again for the first year. Even though like they, before they said, oh, you'll be fine with the practicum. It's the other things. They were like, you have to do your practicum again and pay for it. So you came to BC <laughs> and you went to the BC massage for Yeah, I went to ok Okanagan Valley College of Massage Therapy. You kind of brought it to my attention that there's like a need in society for people just to slow down. And so you're um, offering your services as a massage therapist and... Um, Basically, you're kind of a leader in your lifestyle, um, I find, because you're living, you're living that dream. You're living, you're living the mountain lifestyle. You're living a healthy, you have a healthy vision for yourself. And so I'm hoping that we can inspire our listeners, um, you know, just by kind of shining our own light onto, you know, how we stay healthy and maintain our well-being. So I want to, I'm curious, I want to know more about how you take care of yourself well, I do yoga pretty much every day. Yeah. I think that's 
a big part of my life. And can can like, I just add that you offer cl- you offer classes here at the studio? Yeah, I do. At Chasta Wellness, so Ruth has been um, uh, gracing us with her presence here at the studio, and she offers classes on Tuesday. On Tuesday at nine a.m. At nine a.m. And so we have a drop-in um, fee as well, or membership, which would give students access to all three of the instructors that are here at the studio in Invermere. So that's really exciting stuff. And I've been hearing really lovely things about the people who have been coming to your classes. So I'm really glad that that's working out for you, but you are going to go on a little bit of a vacation next month. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take the intro to osteopath techniques in Vancouver, and then I'm flying to Guatemala to backpack. Guatemala to backpack. Now that is definitely up there in um, healthy living um so are you doing that on your own or what's your I'm plan doing it with a friend of mine yeah yeah so i'm really looking forward to the experience and hiking volcanoes and surfing and yeah sounds like you're great. gonna have a great time is there any other reason you're going or is it more just for like adventure or um yeah it's pretty much for adventure and like i find with massage as a career you have to really like take care of your body and you have to like listen to it and slow down sometimes and like I don't know like in the last few years I've taken like at least a month or two off every year because my body is like I need this and I'm and my like I need like to feel my spark more again for massage and if I'm doing it constantly and I don't take like three weeks off or something like that at least once a year like I just don't feel that spark as much um can I ask you about your spark I'd like to know, <laughs> is there, are there any, like, um, do you have any uh, mentors, people that inspire you, or special books that you've read that motivate you? The teacher I had that taught the, um, some osteopath techniques, he was kind of, he was inspiring, but I would say that uh, I inspire myself, because I, like, go through all these hurdles, and I just keep going, and, like, I keep getting stronger, and I keep becoming a better person, and I'm having so much personal growth, like, yeah, I'm, I feel inspired by myself. <laughs> so you are your own guru. <laughs> Do you have any, like, um, life mantras or mottos or any special, like, mindset techniques or structures that you stick to? Or... Yeah, like, I think that you should play as much as you can because you only live once, really, and you have to be able to laugh at yourself. Not take life so seriously? Yeah. Like, don't take life too seriously because no one gets out alive. I think that's probably... The one that keep, the one that, that drives you? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You're just like, I can't believe I just signed up to go to Guatemala for three weeks, but I'm doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just like, well, you only get one life. Like, yeah. You should probably live it the best way that you can. You were telling me that you do yoga every day, and I know you recently started a new workout routine. Oh yeah, I'm doing CrossFit, which is a pretty intensive workout, but I really like it and I, f- I feel like it's really important with the amount of flexibility I have created because of yoga to create strength behind that. Otherwise, it's not very good for your joints just to have like flexibility without the strength to support it. So I decided to join CrossFit so I could become stronger. Cool. And yeah. how often are you doing that? Like three times a week. Wow. And how intimidating, like, what, did you know much about it before you started, or is a whole new routine for you, or? No, I hadn't really done it before, so it's all pretty new to me, but I have, like, done lots of boot camp, which I really enjoy boot camp. Yeah. They don't have any boot camp in town, I don't think. Otherwise, I would probably have done that, but I'm excited to, like, lift weights in a different way. (laughs) Okay, so CrossFit is, like, weightlifting? I, I'm, yeah, I've never done it's, CrossFit. It's similar so. to like interval training. Like you do a lot of like step ups and chest press and like deadlifts, like things with weights. <laughs> I guess. Do you use those so. kettlebells at all? I've been watching this one chick who has the kettlebells with the handles. Um, oh, okay. And she does a lot of really cool workout um, routines. Yeah. Routines with them. I'm kind of interested in uh, learning more about using those because like yourself you can do the same uh, routine every day with yoga and sometimes it just feels like uh, you need to develop more strength right where yoga can take you so far in flexibility and strength but sometimes you need to incorporate different types of 
routines to, I guess, target different areas of your body that you feel are... Yeah, and it's just, like, really important to have, like, a strong core to support your joints and everything. Like, I have way too much, much flexibility in my shoulders, which, like, as a yogi, you would be like, that's great, but, like, for massage, it's not really as good because, like, it's easy for me to, like, fall into poor postures because my body will go there really easily because I have so much mobility. Whereas, like, doing strength training will make it so that my body won't want to, like, move around so much, won't rotate as much. I'll be a, more cognitive of that. Cognitive? Yeah. <laughs> you sound so brilliant, Ruth. Really. <laughs> oh. like, did you just say cognitive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that means aware. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. More aware of your posture. Yeah, like the mind-body connection. Hmm. Mm. Okay, mind-body connection. I'm yeah. all about the mind-body connection. Yeah, well, as a yogi. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking You'd be my crazy language. not to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah. Were there any other courses that you wanted to talk about that I've forgotten about? Oh, like I might take cranial sacral course in the fall, but I'm kind of just like seeing how I feel about the osteo techniques and see which one I'm like gravitate more towards and then decide from there which one to go for. I have had um, cranial, cranial sacral sessions yes. before. I've had a few of them and I find that they're very, um, I guess like osteo, they're pretty magical. Mm -hmm. uh, where you feel like there's not much happening, but then all of a sudden you can feel stuff happening energetically. And um, from what I understand, it works more not just on a physical level, but it helps to um, heal you like holistically, so emotional. Like trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, emotional trauma helps you to release in a safe way. Um, emotional trauma. And then that in turn can help us to think better. Um, oh, absolutely. It can help with like concussion relief. There's loads of different things it can help with. Some people with migraines, they get the treatment. It really helps. I actually had this amazing like girl that I went to school with, and mm -hmm. I visited her when I was in Grand Prairie because my sister was living up there, and she just did like she was take she's taking her up ledger uh, for the cranial sacral course, and she like pretty much held my shoulder for an hour. And it like cracked and pop popped. It was like it was like insane. It was like this rice crispy sound almost, and it just like melted, and completely let go. And like I thought it was like it was because of massage. Like I was working at a lodge doing all like loads of massage, and like after like that treatment, like I was fine. Like it was crazy because I thought like, oh like it's very muscular. Like I don't know, but I'm like oh I'll try this out and like. And that yeah, was cranial was super, or osteo? Cranial. Oh, okay. It was super effective and it was just, yeah, so awesome to like. So, what is like, the science behind? Like, do you know much about the theory and what's actually taking place? Well, it's like your nervous system is responding. Okay. So, like, when you're, like, when they hold a, an area, like, for example, your head or something like that, mm -hmm. it's like <clears throat> your body is able to tune in to what's going on in your head or in that space where you're holding. And so your nervous system recognizes where something might be out of alignment because now that everything else is quiet, your body can actually go to that area where there's some sort of dysfunction and be, okay, I know what to do. Like, I know how to shift in order to repair this. So it's like based on the principles that your body is intelligent and is able to fix itself. It just needs to be like brought to the attention of. Right. Yeah. I read somewhere that... Yeah, like healing occurs when we, with self-awareness. So when we take time to look at that problem, you know, not try to put a band-aid on it, but uh, so 97% of healing comes from self-awareness. So like you say, you're giving your body time to look at that problem. And sometimes the healing can occur from the inside out. So it could be, you know, an emotional or a mental or spiritual alignment that occurs to fix the physical problem. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, for sure. And like that's like like um, osteo like cranial sacral is just a branch of osteopath medicine. Like oh, an that? osteopath created the cranial sacral. Okay. So it's kind of like very similar on the same like principles. So it's like calming your system so the body then can heal itself, but it needs some kind of like a cradling 
Because it's like a cradling, right? Yeah. So it's like a holding. Similar to that. Yeah, it's just like holding that space there for your body to recognize where it's out of alignment and needs to shift. And then your body will naturally create that shift. Yeah. And it wor works along like, um, like there's this cranial sacral like fluid that runs through your spinal cord. So when you hold on to someone's head, you actually feel like this pulsation, but it's not the same as your heartbeat, but it's your cranial fluid and it's the movement of it. And like just holding it and like slowly sh like feeling the shift, like things will open up and release and then the fluid will flow better. And that's like, that bays your entire nervous system. Like this fluid. <clears throat> so your nervous system is the spinal cord. And your brain. Your and brain your and brain. So the cord. whole limbic. The brain and the spinal cord make up your limbic system. Is that correct? And the sacral, cranial, and sacral. And like obviously there's peripheral nerves that are also a part of it. A part of your limbic system? Or your crane. central nervous yeah. system? And then, that's your peripheral nervous system, but. It's a different system. Yeah. Same system. Well, not really the same system, but like. Um, like part of like it, it's all interconnected do you know what I mean like your your peripheral nerves come right off of your spinal cord so they like innervate your hands and your arms and things like that so it's all like connected right and that comes like from your brain so yeah and so mm. <clears throat> like I know with Reiki and the science behind Reiki it, it stimulates your peripheral 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 yeah. nervous system and our peripheral it's not nervous peripheral system or is it peripheral nervous system? Nervous system. system. Yeah. And um, so the peripheral nervous system, um, that's kind of what people are receiving, how they're receiving energy through your, through your skin. Mm -hmm. and, and when you have the Reiki, um, <clears throat> when you're connecting to the source energy from the crown chakra, um, your, so your thalamus part of your brain. Okay. Uh, is more stimulated than most people and so that helps um, the energy that's flowing through um, your peripheral and so when you're around somebody that isn't really trained or aware of that connection of the crown chakra and isn't consciously what did you call it earlier that one word Cognitive. Cognitive. <laughs> Cognitive. You like it, eh? I love that word I'm all over it yeah a part of your brain is triggered right through uh, that connection and then sending the energy through the peripheral and the receiver who doesn't have that part of the brain functioning uh, most times because they're in that state of sympathetic or trauma um, and they're in a different part of their brain altogether mm -hmm. right in a different part of their limbic system and uh, so basically yeah when they're in fright or flight or sympathetic and the body is almost like attacking itself. So your heart races, your blood sugar spike, you have, you know, your digestive system is upset mm -hmm. and you're really not seeing reality clearly when we're at, under chronic stress and that sympathetic or fright and flight is triggered all the time. And so the Reiki or the holding or whatever, the yoga is stimulating the parasympathetic um, part of the limbic system when we're in relaxation Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that starts to happen um, when you're in with a someone like Ruth or myself or anybody trained in Reiki or uh, massage or different healing modalities like cranial sacral. And uh, so then your body is triggering the parasympathetic. And you could do this for yourself uh, with even just breathing or coming to a yoga class or getting out in nature. We trigger our parasympathetic. So it, it's really highly to do with the environment that creates. Yeah. Like it's like the healer, like you're like the person on the table, their body will mimic what the healer is doing. So like there is like a type of like nervous system response, response. that yeah. this person ha will automatically have if they're open to it. And yeah, well being just coming into setting the intention, there's something wrong. I'm going to go see this person. That's the self-awareness that people need to tap into. But sadly, um, in our fast-paced society, a lot of people don't even have the money to invest in things like art and self-care. Yeah. I think that's the things that they leave off 
very last, they leave it till very last on their list and they're too over consumed with being busy. And they always feel that they don't even have the time to take a yoga class or they don't have time to do a massage, even if they have the money. But the thing is, is like, if you aren't taking the time to do your, the self care, your body will wear out and you'll end up like, it'll end up costing you a lot more than if you just maintained like people who like, for example, like getting a, a massage every month, like just maintaining that to help your body like the likelihood of you straining something is significantly decreased like the likelihood of something affecting you like physically really badly that you couldn't that you would be able to overcome a lot better if you're seeing regular therapy of some sort like that's why you go to your chiropractor once a month like these are the like these things you do because you want your body to maintain long term yes and a lot of people go oh I don't want to go once because then I'm going to have to go back and do it again but if you're not taking care of yourself on a daily, daily basis, so self-care regimen, um, then you need to go and ha have somebody else help you to relax because when our body is in a relaxation response or a parasympathetic, your heart just is calm, your blood sugar is normalized, your guts feel healthier, you see things for as they are, and you come from a very clear present standpoint. What yoga does, it helps you to be calm and it helps you to be present. What, massage does is it helps you relax and de-stress and yeah you know you're stressed out but do you know what can happen when you're under stress all the time it can lead to chronic ailments or dis-ease imbalance in the body and like Ruth was saying then it's too late and sometimes it's not going to be a one-time massage fix that's going to help that chronic inflammation or you know sometimes it's you know even uh, like depression that can um, prevent people from living a truly fulfilling life. But that's after a long time of stress, right? Like that can be prevented by... By taking care of yourself and like making yourself. yourself a priority. Yeah. So if you're not taking care of yourself, now is the time to <laughs> sign up for a massage and tap into what like, it feels you like. You don't have to go for a massage. Like you can just go for a walk in nature for like... 20 minutes every day you just need to like make that time to make your like kind of like shut off like don't demand your body to like do and think and be yeah do and think and be and even yeah. like what I was talking about with my yoga class this morning is and they all just went wow that is so true is um, we're just always moving forward so even that walking sometimes is energetically always pushing yourself forward like we get up out of bed we move forward we reach for things you know like we're always going somewhere yeah and I'm like just settle back settle back relax like come into yourself your core but we need to actually energetically and physically kind of push ourselves back yeah and um, come into alignment like with our authentic self right yeah and it can be distracting because everyone around you is like running around like a chicken with his head cut off and like when you are not doing this, you're going against the grain of your society. Like you're doing, you're taking care of you and people are like, oh, like it must be nice to have time for that. Like, and they don't understand that like this is something that they should be making a priority of because it's going to help you long term. It's going to be worth your while, but yeah, like do yoga first yeah. and then do the rest of your life around yoga or whatever it is that is fulfilling for you to relax. Maybe people can't relax or feel full of life from yoga. You know, um, I know for different people, they have a different idea or perception around what yoga is. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, for some people, it's like buying Lululemon pants and going to a hot yoga studio. But for others, it's like, no, no, it's rolling out your mat wherever you are and just taking time to breathe and connect. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be going through like this crazy vinyasa flow. Like you can lay there on your mat in child's pose. I think that's like one of the most humbling things about like take when you take yoga teacher training is like you can be like, oh, like in order to be a yogi, like you don't have to do an hour practice every day. Like you can practice in your life. Like you can be kind, like just use the principles throughout your life rather than feeling like, oh, I have to do this like practice or I'm not an authentic person, like this physical practice every day. Like you can be on your mat for five minutes. Like, yeah, but it's, it's a it's lifestyle in your heart. Yeah, it's in your heart what coming out. It's about kindness and being truthful. Like our yoga principles that we follow 
Not just Ruth and I. We're not a little cult. <laughs> just <laughs> <We> could be. <laughs> uh, probably. I think I already have. <laughs> well, if you're watching, you're halfway there. Let's, let's do the let's do the blood sister thing. Think. Maybe not. <laughs> That's too scary these days. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, but the uh, the uh, the. Yamas and the Nayamas, so the whole philosophy of yoga, it's not just about getting to a yoga studio and buying yoga clothes. It's way beyond um, taking your practice as serious. It's, it's more about um, discovering you know, how to live a truly ethical lifestyle and, uh, and, and set goals and attain them. And yoga gives us energy to actually follow our dreams and do things that you know, we really want to do, not what society is telling us we should be doing. You know. Mm-hmm. But really discovering who we are and what, what fulfills us. And then as you build a, a deeper practice, it's, it's the yoga that gives us the energy by learning how to tap in and control our breathing and just be present with, with our bodies and, and moving in a way that will help to repair rather than strain and create more stress. Um, so that's kind of you know, what we've learned um, through our teaching yeah, so slowing down and the parasympathetic, when it's calm and under control, we can learn how to maintain that relaxed state daily. Um, and so we, we learn to do things that will nourish our bodies rather than deplete us because we're actually working on maintaining a stronger energy, right, through yeah. our practice. And, um, through- and the more connected to source you are, like the more you see your body as a temple and you want to treat it as so... So you're like, oh, I'm going to like choose this other healthy alternative versus like this other thing that I could do because I know I'm feeding my soul and I know this matters. Like you have such more respect for your body, like as though it's not even your own because like we're all we're all like divine beings in ourselves. So once we recognize that, then you can't really just not treat your body properly. Beautiful. That was so enlightening. So it's not just what we consume, like it's definitely has a lot to do with what we intake, like food, but it's information. It's information that we allow ourselves to receive, right? Because mm-hmm. it goes through our limbic system and it stores in our body. So it's everything from music to music to listening to what the shit people say sometimes. You know, the you know, you can be involved in that or you can pull yourself out and not be a part of that and it's how what we tell ourselves on a daily basis it's mindset like I really liked your your motto is you know you only live once make it happen make it a make it a good time like if we're not having fun why are we doing it you mm-hmm. know so I've been really trying to adapt more and to be more energetic and playful I like to I just like the feeling of not taking life so, so seriously. seriously and yeah. overthinking stuff right like, we'll leave this off the tape, but I was like, oh, she's just overthinking the interview. <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm going to straighten out her. Truth. <laughs> right? like, uh, I don't know. Well, I was like, she's just overthinking. I was. I was like, oh, man, I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> but, <clears throat> yeah, and I think you're just, you know, you were just being your authentic self. And when we can tap into that, that's when the truth comes out, right? And that's, yeah. that's what inspires other people to be better humans is you know, looking at how other people figure it out and what truly makes them authentic, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not just like, you'll be authentic if you come to my yoga studio or our yoga studio. It's like, you'll be authentic when you discover your yoga anywhere. And like you said, it could be three minutes a day or it could be, it could be six hours a day. It could be going to a yoga teacher training or it could be um, taking a group yoga class because I also believe that you know, going out for a walk in nature is good by yourself, but I think there's a huge thing to be said around community, community and having a friend to go out on a walk or in a group exercise, um, setting where there's that sense of love and belonging or just acceptance. And especially when you have the background of yoga, the, um, teaching, you know, it, it really helps us to live a more ethical lifestyle. So you're you've got 10 principles that it's helping us to train our minds and our feelings and our actions and our thoughts to be better humans. If we follow those yamas and the nayamas, like the ethical practice of yoga, not just, not just the physical, the grunt and groaning, but you know, 
not taking what from others what doesn't belong to us or mm -hmm. yeah. and it's easy to get lost in like the asanas like feeling like you should just like be able to do all of these poses because that makes you more of a yogi where it's like I think the more you're able to like back off from that uh, uh, that like ego center I'm not comparing yourself of doing to and being more the more of a yogi you become <laughs> Yeah, it feels good to withdraw sometimes, and that's a big core of the teaching too, is to withdraw from, like you said, what's happening outside of you in society and trying to keep up, right? And sometimes mm -hmm. you just got to come sit back and get within yourself and like truly think about what is it that I can do to help myself feel more relaxed? How can I take better care of myself today or yeah, you know, be a better human? But definitely the yoga has a really good template for, for teaching ourselves, like retraining our minds to, mm -hmm. to thrive, not just by ourselves, but in a community, right? To treat be people better. Yeah, and just like doing like small things, I guess also like self-care wise, like having a gratitude journal. So like every day you wake up and you, right away you write down 10 things that you are so grateful for and that like starts your day. Like that is where you start your day. Well, I did, um, yesterday I did a intuition workshop and my guest speaker, she couldn't say that enough. Like it, the importance of gratitude, we're talking about like just discovering a deeper ability to manifest and to tap into our intuition. I said, well, I've learned and I shared with the group how I started writing my I am statements. And I've always heard about, you know, journaling and vision boards and I am statements, but I've never really done the work, right? Like, oh, I know that's good for me, but I'm so busy. <laughs> I'm not going to take time to do the yeah. self-discovery until this year, 2019, I just got really serious with myself and I said, I want, I, I want to journal more. I've wanted to journal more for so long, so I'm going to make time for journaling. I want to um, take charge of my life and bring more of what I really want to attract into my life. So I'm going to get serious and get my mindset wrapped around, you know, etching out those goals and those action steps and really empowering myself instead of depleting myself because of, you know, no self-confidence or, you know, whatever it is that's prevented me from fully chasing after my dreams in, in the past. And I realized sometimes it's just like lazy human nature where you almost forget that you've set goals. <laughs> oh, for sure. And like you get busy with life and you get busy and doing all the things. And I thought, well, if I could just grapple my insecurities and, and take control and use my I am statements. So I've been um, discovering more of what I truly want and listening to what's been preventing me from getting it and overcoming my limitations with positive statements and feelings around why, why I want these things and really coaching myself into stronger mindsets. And um, so I've been doing my I am statements in the morning, every morning and taking time to journal and write and um, ask myself questions that, that will help me to probe deeper. But now, today, I took all of my I am statements and added gratitude to them. So. Oh, nice. I know. I can show them to that's you. That's awesome. Um, I've got a couple pages. <laughs> well, that's got, really good. I've got a couple of pages. More pages, the better, right? But uh, she's, uh, and I'm going to continue to to build on my, you know, once you kind of get through and get that confidence and um, get past those limitations and you can, you know, obviously build more. And actually the, the new moon is the best time because it, it actually amplifies your intentions. So we just can't, we're just coming out of a new moon cycle, the dark moon. And um, that's the best time to reevaluate your affirmations and what it is that you want out of life. So and it's just basically looking at what you feel you don't have and then discovering a way to reword it so you can bring more or attract more of that because it's all about your vibe it's like the energy it's a lot of attraction and I'm sure you know that yeah absolutely yeah and so you know you put out from your heart center what it is you're looking to attract right like what you want I don't want to say what you want because the want is actually a way of keeping you in want and I've learned that so you're never supposed to want or need anything <laughs> No, you say it like it's yours already. You say it like it's yours. Like you have beyond a shadow of a doubt, it belongs to you, like in manifestation. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. You don't let that doubt creep in. Yeah. And the doubt comes <laughs> from the ego. 
And so a lot of what we talked about last night as well is um, like what's preventing us from manifesting and achieving our goals or our life vision is, you know, when the lower three chakras are out of, out of whack and a lot of us store that trauma in the emotional center or have the, the doubt and disbelief in the ego, right? So mm-hmm. where we should um, have an empowered self-esteem, sometimes we have an unhealthy, um, imbalanced ego and that creates... Um, like toxic relationships, um, unhealthy life habits, um, like addictions, mm-hmm. right? And just sometimes it's in our mind that it's preventing us from achieving things because we have just so much um, negative, negative talk going through our through our minds. And again, with yoga, it really helps us to get really clear on what we're listening to and control almost the fluctuation of the feelings and the thoughts. The more we can learn how yeah, to control. Yeah, you can just say, "Oh, that thought can leave now." But you have to and create just the like awareness. Imagine it like floating away, That's and it does. It leaves. You just you choose what you want to entertain. We're done. We're done. <laughs> we don't need to think about that again. But sometimes yeah. we overthink, right? And our it's going to turn our head a funny shape if we continually think about like something that's not even happening, but you think about it. Yeah, in I 10 mean, different it always ha- it happens to me all the time. I'm like try to do that thing or put it in the corner, you know. It's a disciplined practice, I guess. It's not that easy. Oh, and <laughs> I'm not really there yet. <laughs> and it's dealing with other people in our life that are further away from that self-realization attainment and, you know, grappling being in a relationship with them because they're just coming from a place of the ego all the time. And it's almost like a bantering, belittling individuality so like a personality that's mean but you still have to deal with them yeah and so when you can get aware like you're talking about attaining that awareness about ourselves then we can be aware that you know that human being is coming from a a mean place of their ego or that person is coming from a place of fear and they they have no no recognition of what they're saying or feeling or the impact on you because they're in their own headspace so it's not personal it's literally just like them letting things out without thinking about someone else's feelings like mm-hmm. and not without taking... the intention of me- like being mean or spiteful i would say most people don't intend that right but some people are just from a coming from a hurt place yeah and um and then their communication isn't optimal and then we take it personally. Yeah, they're not very cognitive of what they're saying to us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. And uh, when you get your lower three chakras kind of fil- the filters cleaned, yeah. then we can really rise above into that manifesting and that intuition and, and mm. really cultivate that healthy lifestyle and really affirm when we want something and it comes to us because what yeah. we're putting out is pure energy you know, without, without doubting that it's not going to come back to us or come into our reality. That's kind of how I understand the law of attraction working, but it gets, it gets dysfunctional when the filters are dirty. So when the lower three, oh, for sure. Like if you're, if you're manifesting a million dollars, like, is that coming from a place? What, what place is that coming from you? You know what I mean? Like, is that coming from a place of like greed or is that coming from a place of love? Right? Exactly. Like, I don't know. So like there's some things obviously you can manifest that, but is it pure? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, I understand um, <laughs> what you're saying. What's your intention? <laughs> right? What is your intention behind wanting <laughs> yeah. what you want, but not wanting it? Because I think, yeah. I'm not saying like a million dollars would be a bad thing. I'm just saying that like, depends where your heart is when you ask for something yeah what's your intention behind your goals and Mm -hmm. yeah so I think it's really important to um you know stay in a really clear clear state and yeah I learned a lot yesterday about using gratitude with my affirmations and yeah, so I've been working on that, and that's good. This year is going much better for me. I think this is one of my my healthiest, happiest years of my 42 years of existence Yay. thus far. <laughs> that makes me really happy. I know. It's great to hear. Feeling happy and feeling yeah. confident and 
like I said, I have some pretty big goals for this year. So I'm just working away at them and trying to mind my own business and and stay connected to wonderful people like yourself because you inspire me to well, keep doing you. what I'm doing. <laughs> and thank you for helping me to motivate the masses today. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Was there anything else that you wanted to share with anybody, everybody? Oh, I guess like on your wellness journey, like there's no like place that's too small. Like you can start something really small. Like you can eat more vegetables every day. Like you don't have to go to a yoga class. If you're too, if you're nervous, like you can down, you can use like, there's this great app called Downward Dog. You can try that. You can do it five minutes a day and start there. Like, like you can start like starting small. Like it's, you don't have to like achieve a big thing suddenly. You don't have to be like, you know what? I saw that. And I think I'm going to run a marathon tomorrow. Like, no, you can just like, get realistic, get, get realistic with your goals when you begin and then slowly expand from that yeah you know if somebody doesn't have any type of an exercise regimen already um, what I always recommend to my clients is um, you know you really got to start stretching a little bit more as you age especially if you're chronically sitting Um, how would you feel if you just rolled out your mat for five minutes in the morning and did a few learned a few yoga stretches a day rather than taking that full one hour class, Um, you know, or like you said, if you're on a budget, there are ways to learn how to do yoga without having to, you know, sign up for a membership or, you know, taking a personal training yourself. You can, there's so much for free online to get you started and just starting with five minutes a day, any time of day, not just the morning, but whenever it works best for you. And I always tell people, like, when they're really reevaluating, you know, my life is shit. What can I do? I'm so stressed out. I don't know where to start. Um, like you say, it's like, don't just stop all the bad stuff, but start one good thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah. yeah like, don't, don't be so hard on yourself because when you beat yourself up, you've already beaten yourself up already. That's why you're stuck in a shithole. Like, that's yeah. why you're smoking chronic cigarettes and guzzle in a bottle of vodka every day (laughs) I know who you are (laughs) but yeah but you know you don't have to stop everything right away like all of your crutches Mm -hmm. but um and see it like as more of a process of self self self-love like you're doing this one extra thing because you love yourself not because it's a punishment because you love yourself like when I get on my mat and I don't really feel like doing yoga I think there are tons of people in wheelchairs who would kill to do yoga like, I have this opportunity every single day. I can, like, yeah. run. I can do anything I want. Get and, like, I work with people body. in chronic pain all the time. Yeah. And it really, really puts it in, into perspective for me. I'm like, okay, how could I not? How could I not be active? How yeah. could I not enjoy the body that I'm given? I have that when mindset, too. When some people too. don't have it. I have that mindset, too. When I realize, like... Get off your butt, girl. I don't want to call myself lazy here. I was about to say lazy, but I'm not that lazy. I'm actually quite energized. I do a lot. Um, But yeah, to motivate myself, I I do have that attitude where I realize like some people are less fortunate and don't have the mobility availability and Mm -hmm. uh, to get out there and to do some, even if it's just to go for a walk and use your body and to be better to your body. For yeah. me, for me, a lot of my stuff wasn't physical. It was a lot of overcoming mental and emotional stuff that I've been really working on. Um, like I said, reinforcing positive statements and positive feelings, and you know, taking taking a really um, it's like a it's almost like a checklist. You know, when you start to realize like you're a little more agitated or a little more upset, easier then whoa, 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 okay, let's fix this. It's not outside of you that's making you upset. It's turmoil inside of you that you have to... Acknowledge and deal with, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what do I need to do to slow down? What do I need to take care of myself? Yeah, because um, if you have a good internal environment, like everything externally can't even touch you. It doesn't. It can't even phase you. Right? I'm not there, but I'm saying like... Me too. <laughs> as you get there... I know. Like those, these I've seen glimpses of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it takes, I, I, I swear, like I've come a long way, definitely, you know, and that's what I was talking about with the, with the shitty people in your life and the bad attitudes and not responding to that takes a lot. And that's 
cultivation of mindfulness that we I've discovered through yoga and through community support people other people who have taught me about meditation and just like you said observing those feelings as they arise and saying no I don't have to go there not today you know (laughs) and it's just that self-acknowledgement so whether it's some outside or inside it's acknowledging what's happening in that moment and kind of grappling your choice in that moment and reaffirming or restating your affirmations or I'm going to do this to make myself feel better so that I don't go down that cyclical, you know, which sometimes turns into patterns of people's lives where they just don't take care of themselves. You know, it's almost, it's almost like an unconscious pattern that you fall into where you know, all of a sudden you're not showering every day or you're not exercising at least three times a week. You know, I, I was there before where I didn't exercise. Mm-hmm. And I, like and your body goes through peaks and valleys. It's not yeah. in your mind. like. But now it's sure. like I exercise so I have energy for life every day. I take mm-hmm. one day off. I take Saturdays off. And every other day... I make sure I do something, you know, definitely yeah. yoga once or twice a day, but then I'm also incorporating other things because I have energy for other things, which reminds me, we're going to go stand up paddle boarding together this. Oh, that'll be summer. fun. We have a couple boards, so. Oh, nice. Do you have a board? No, I'm going to get one this year though. Oh yeah? Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to take, we'll go out. I'll show you one of my favorite spots around here. Oh, cool. I'm not going to share it with the masses because when I go, I like to be there alone. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I understand. (laughs) (laughs) Just like White Swan. Have you ever been to White Swan, Mm -hmm. the hot pools here? Yeah. Like when I first started living here 20 years ago in the valley, we would go there and you could pretty well go naked because there were no tourists. There were... Yeah, it was a lot quieter a while ago. Oh, yeah, because I guess you had access to White Swan growing up in Golden, just north of Invermere. Yeah. Went to high school there. But now... The last few times I've gone over the years, it's like you have full a, of people. a lineup. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. You can't take your puppies. You have to go at like one in the morning. You can't take a bottle of wine <laughs> anymore. <laughs> and, and before it was like you could just show up and have the whole place to yourself. So sometimes it's best to not give all of your secrets away. Yeah, it's because it was like put on like Destination BC, best places to go in BC. Oh, okay. But I want to get I want to get into some healthy I want to start making some soups and like I know a couple of soup recipes but I'm I'm just craving baking right now honestly I just my kitchen is so small in the house that I'm in and it's, yeah. I don't even I don't even have all my baking stuff unpacked from our last move so oh. but uh I really want to get some good like healthy um muffin recipes mm-hmm. I'm craving to make some muffins or some soups yeah, I love making soup. Do you? I know you it's were telling delicious. me about yeah. what uh, you made some soup when we went curling. Yeah, it was like yeah, it was like well yeah, like roasted yams and onions and garlic and um, cumin. Didn't you say? Is there? I don't think so. Not cumin. Um, well, I put cilantro in it. Oh, cilantro! I knew there and was lentils. like a different Those and lentils. That sounds good. Maybe you'll like hearty. Yeah. Maybe you'll type up the recipe for me one day. Okay, I just throw things together. Oh, see, that's what I mean. People <laughs> I'm not that really make a recipe soups, they're like, I just do this and this, and I'm I like, just, like, I need throw the recipe. things together. Like, I love making <laughs> soup because, like, you just like whatever's in your fridge, you just throw it in. Oh, I can't do that. Have you tried? I, I can't. You just throw pickles this in. Is, no, this I'm is the coat. This is me. This is my mindset crumbling. No. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't. Like everything vegetable like. Yeah, no. I don't get how to do that. No. I, I need structure. Oh, I don't like structure in any way. <laughs> Most of the time. Maybe this is where we can cognitively balance each other out. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll take some of yours and you can take some of mine and we'll be like the yin and the yang. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. No, I... Yeah, I won't say can't. I am open to new learning experiences. There you go. I will let you get off the hook here, off okay. the line, and head out to enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. Thank and you. You're welcome. So again, we'll attach your 
Do you have a website or do you just go on Instagram for people's bookings or? I have a website. Okay. So. Yeah. So it's www.ruthdevilermt.ca. We'll attach that. So if anyone's mm-hmm. looking for a lovely new RMT in the Valley, Ruth is available for new clients. She's open to see new people and wishing you all the success in your new adventures that you're going out on next month. Thank you. I'm very excited. Yeah, it's the first time I'm actually backpacking. Because, like, before I've just, like, stayed in, like, um, Airbnbs or, like, hotels and stuff. So this you're actually really fun, camping? Like, like, taking a tent? No, like, staying in a hostel. Oh, okay, okay. Like, hostels and just, like, only having a backpack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just, like, taking buses or transit across. So I've been practicing my Spanish in my car, like, every day. <laughs> and so it's... So I can talk to people. <laughs> You're smart for doing that. You must be very highly intelligent. Like, learning a second language is... I've been trying to learn Spanish for a few years here. <laughs> I'll let you know when I get She's it. like, I'm not that smart. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> um, so, Guatemala? Yeah. Yeah. Guatemala, and then El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Wow. Take lots of pictures, please. Mm-hmm, I'll live vicariously through you. I'm very excited for the adventure. Excellent. Well, congratulations. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you're doing that for yourself. Me too. There's this place called the Yoga Forest yeah. in Guatemala, and it's, like, so beautiful, and I follow them on Instagram. And they do, like, this thing where you can, like, go work for, like, six months to a year in the yoga forest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, it's hard for, like, I love living here, but I am, like, one of those, I just, I'm, like, I don't know. Wouldn't that be so I, like, cool, though? I look all over. I'm, like, oh, this would be cool. This would be cool. Like, you know? Squirrel. <laughs> like, I have a hard time, like, focusing on the one thing I'm doing. <laughs> so, Ruth will be available if she comes back from Guatemala. <laughs> yeah, that's it, right? <laughs> okay. Well, you'll always have a place in the yoga studio when you do come back. I'd like to continue you. offering your teaching. and. Yeah, I'll be, I'll for sure be in May again. Like, yeah. I'm back. Yeah, okay. I think I'm not actually promising. going to stay in Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> not yet. Not this time around. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding, mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have a voicemail at home when you get home. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Cute. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, your adventures are going to be amazing. Um, looking forward to seeing the pictures and seeing you when you get back and taking yeah. some more of your yoga classes. Great. 